Hey guys, so today I am getting around to doing the uh, Q&A video that I promised you guys. Um, Y'all send it, send in your questions and now let's get through the answers. All right, so first question is, what are some of my main tips for a younger bass singer who's beginning to sing? Um, so some tips I would say, don't force yourself. Let your voice come naturally. Um, no matter what register you're working in, whether it's vocal fry, chest fry mix, fried chest, growl, subharmonics, um, chest, falsetto, head voice, mix voice, whistle, cargado, you know, whatever. Don't force yourself. Um, there's, a, there's a fine line between testing out the extremes and over forcing yourself and hurting yourself. Um, so I would say, yeah, avoid forcing yourself. Um, drink lots and lots of water. Um, try to avoid dairy products uh, the day of a concert or a performance or something like that. The lactate in the phlegm will back up your throat, um, kind of stick to your vocal cords and you won't sound too pretty. Um, avoid kind of clearing your throat, the whole like <coughs> kind of thing before you sing. Um, of course, unless you're doing a growled note, which is a little different. Um, but yeah, avoid doing that because over time you'll end up scratching your vocal cords and that's not good. Um, sleep well, sleep, get a lot and a lot of rest. Um, on average, I'd say try for seven to nine hours every night. Um, you can also take a nap before a performance, um, especially for bass singers. It really helps trying to get that morning voice, so to speak, um, later in the day. Um, so, you know, take a 20, 30 minute, maybe even an hour power nap before a concert or a performance or what have you. Um, if you need to hit those really low bassy notes, learn to work on your highs as well. So if you're, if you're just trying to improve your low register, especially your chest voice, um, it's not gonna, you're gonna be so limited to how much you can do purely just working that one part of it you have to work your upper chest as well. And that works on any end of the spectrum, any register. Um, you have to work both the, the lows and the highs. Um, because if you improve your highs, it'll help with the lows and vice versa. Um, overall expansion is really what you want to go for. Um, rather than just trying to have, you know, extremely one or the other. Don't focus too much on projection for your low notes as well. Um, kind of aim more for quality over quantity. Um, and again, that's kind of any register anywhere in your voice. Um, yeah, so don't don't force projection. Um, for example, my lowest chest day to day is usually around a C2, um, but my lowest projected, say over a choir, um, or you know, a grand amount of distance, 20 plus feet, um, it's about an E2. Um, so don't try and force, don't force it um, and worry so much about projection um, because that'll come, especially if you're on a microphone. Obviously, if you're on a microphone, you don't have to scream into it because you're on a microphone, you know? So yeah, I'd say those are pretty much kind of the main tips. Um, number two, what general pointers do I want everyone going into the world of facing to know? Um, again, kind of the same answers as the previous question. They were kind of went hand in hand, those two questions. Um, other pointers, don't limit yourself, um, as far as not specifically for singing, but listening to music or bass music in general, bass singers, um, don't limit yourself to one genre of music. Um, for example, you know, most people know your classic acapella basses, Avi Kaplan, Tim Faust, Jeff Castellucci. Um, the big three, you know, right now. Um, but don't limit yourself just to acapella. You know, you can turn to um, more choral music and go something like uh, Glenn Miller, um, Matt Fouch, um, Vladimir Miller, um, even Matt Spriggs, our very own Matt Spriggs. Um, I say very own, he's in the bass singing nation. Uh, in the Discord and the Facebook page. Um, you know, to Yang, don't focus so much on one specific genre of music. Um, 
broaden that horizon, open it up. Um, you know, Southern Gospel, Ken Turner, um, J.D. Sumner, you know, one of the world's greatest bass singers ever. Um, Paul David Kenemer, even though he's a baritone, uh, and yes, he is a baritone, for those that don't know, his lowest chest is actually like a C2, C, or C2, B1, somewhere in there. Um, all those crazy low notes that he's hitting are fried chest and chest fry mix, um, and then a few at the very end are vocal fry. Um, but he became a master of using those techniques. Um, but yeah, he is a baritone. Uh, who else? Um, I know a lot of, I'll get a lot of flack for saying this, but Tim Storms too, he's a good one to listen to. Um, but yeah, so I'd say those are broaden, broaden your horizon for sure. Um, number three, do I like Chick-fil-A? Yes. <laughs> um, kind of a random question, but yes, I do like Chick-fil-A. Um, this is a little, it's a bit of a sensitive, touchy topic. I like Chick-fil-A, I like their food. It's probably one of the best chicken sandwiches, um, especially from a fast food restaurant that I've ever had. Uh, I know there's the debate of the whole uh, Popeye's Chick-fil-A thing there. Um, I'm gonna leave it at I like both. I like both of them, um, but, uh, but yeah, I do like Chick-fil-A. I'm not a huge, huge, uh, sponsor or contributor to where they allocate their funds. Um, if you want to know more about that, you can either message me or kind of just Google that yourself. Um, I have heard that they have changed that. Um, they got a lot of flack for promoting certain things. Um, and so I think that has changed now. I think it changed about two or three years ago. I'm not exactly sure, um, but I was not a huge fan of that. Um, but the food, food is amazing. So I do like Chick-fil-A. Like, the service is incredible. Shout out to Joe Decker, um, Bro Joe Bass, who's actually the one who asked me this question. He worked at Chick-fil-A. Um, but yeah, service with a smile, my pleasure. Yeah, no, I, I love Chick-fil-A. I like their food. Their service is great too. They're great people. Um, number four. Have I ever reached a G-sharp one in chess voice? Um, so I was asked this question by two different people, um, or a variation of this question. Um, yes and no. So the reason I say yes and no, um, if you guys have seen my videos on here, you'll know my lowest chest note that you hear is usually about an A1 uh, with morning voice. Um, there were a couple of times in one or two of those clips where I dipped down to a G-sharp one, but it was for, just for such a small amount of time. I don't even really know if it could technically be counted as a G-sharp one. Um, it was more of like a sharp G-sharp one or a flat A1. Um, so by technicality, yes, I have hit a G-sharp one in chess voice. Um, do I really count it? I did for the clout, for, you know, the clout, the whatever, for a minute or two, but then I was like, mm, it wasn't strong enough and it wasn't sustained like the A1s, so at this point, no, I don't really count it, um, so I personally say, now say my lowest chest note that I've hit at the moment is an A1, um, but I guess you could technically say, yes, I have hit a G-sharp one in chess voice. Right. <laughs> Number five. So we got a little, uh, little weird questions here. Um, what is my opinion <laughs> on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict? Um, well, I did promise I would answer just about any question. Um, so my opinion, um, I am not... Uh, Israeli or Palestinian, um, although I have heritage throughout the Middle East. Um, my dad was born in Lebanon. His dad's side of the family is from Lebanon, his mom's side of the family is from Turkey. So, you know, I got it kind of everywhere. Um, but my opinion on the conflict, though it's one that is very limited to what we see in Western culture um, and Western news, I'm gonna leave it kind of open-ended. I will say, 
I think the Palestinians, the Arabs are correct. Um, I think what they're doing is more apt. Um, I will say I tend to side a little more with the Palestinian and the Arabs um, than the Israelis um, or the Jews. But like I said, I don't want to say I know enough about the engagement. I mean, I know the surface level stuff that, you know, everybody else kind of does. Um, but I'm not like my father. I haven't delved, you know, down the rabbit hole into it. Um, so I'll leave it kind of open-ended with that. Number six, what is my opinion on felching? Um, so first off, I didn't know what the hell this word was. Um, so just like anybody else, I went on Google, Googled it, saw it on Urban Dictionary. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna say what it is. You're more than welcome to do what I did and find out for yourself. Um, <laughs> uh, let's just say I don't agree with that. I, that's not my thing. Um, yeah, no, no, not for me. Um, number seven, favorite bass song. So this is the last question, favorite bass song. Um, I'm gonna kind of take this as a two-parter question. Uh, first, my favorite bass song, like just to sing. Um, as far as purely with chess voice, um, that I can do kind of any time of the day, probably Way Down South by Josh Turner. Um, really anything by Josh Turner. Him and I have a very, very similar chest range. Um, and uh, Johnny Cash, that's the other one. Um, myself, Johnny Cash, and Josh Turner. We all have a very similar chest range. Um, so really to sing in chest voice, at least anything by Josh Turner or Johnny Cash. Or really anything by Avi Kaplan too. I love, love Avi Kaplan. Um, but to be honest, he's probably one of my, definitely one of my top three favorite bass singers of all time. Definitely, and I might get a little flack for this, my number one favorite acapella bass singer, um, or was, I guess, now that he does a solo career. Um, but yeah, so chest voice, probably one of those three artists. Um, I typically say way down south, just because I use that for karaoke. Um, karaoke music because nobody really has any, uh, you know, pentatonics or voice play or home free or even obvious solo stuff. Typically they don't have any of those um, in a karaoke machine at like a bar or whatever. Um, so I will probably go with something by Josh Turner. Um, I particularly like to use Way Down South because of the nice low C2 at the end, um, especially because that's, you know, about the end of my daily chest range. So I like to kind of show off there. Um, but as far as my favorite bass song, um, hmm, favorite bass line in a song, uh, from, Aca from, you know, the acapella basses, I would probably have to say, I don't know, that's a tough one. Um, shout out to Mar, Mar uh, Marcello Bass, who asked me this question, because this is, this is a tough question. Um. I would probably say from from Home Free, my top two favorite bass songs are Dive Bar Saints um, and It Looks Good. That's the original song by Home Free. Um, so that and Dive Bar Saints are probably two of my favorite bass lines uh, from Home Free. Um, yeah. From Voice Play, favorite bass song, bass line, um, probably, I really, really like, uh, Tennessee Whiskey. Um, I love their rendition of it. Love the bass line. Jeff kills it. Um, and actually I might have to say three on this one. Um, something like this. I think it's with, yeah, something like this. Um, with Jay Nunn before he was officially part of voice play. Um, yeah, I love that song. The video, the quality of that video is incredible. I love the whole lights and everything. Um, but yeah, that's probably definitely one of them. Um, and then the other 
probably, oh my god. I literally did a cover of it too. I did a short little bass cover, which is terrible. Um, it's That's even worse that I can't remember it and I've done it. Um, Bridge Over Troubled Water. Um, that's also one of my favorite. Um, from Pentatonix. Okay, so I'm gonna give a couple different answers for this. For Pentatonix from Avi Kaplan, where when Avi Kaplan was with Pentatonix, uh, my favorite bass song, um, I would have two there. Um, surprisingly, I think they both might be Christmas songs. Um, Little Drummer Boy, absolutely love it. It's definitely not his deepest. Um, he hits E2s, D2s, maybe a C2? I don't remember. Um, a lot of E2s, a lot of D2s. Um, E flat twos, you know, all up and in there. Um, I absolutely love that song. Um, it's simplistic, but also we did a cover of that in high school, an acapella cover, and I was the only bass who could sing um, below an E2. Um, so I had a lot of fun with that, being the only one to sing those notes. Um, so I might be a little biased <laughs> for that answer. Um, what else? Again, I feel like a dumbass for this one. Um, I looked it up. <laughs> We've actually done a cover of this in high school. Um, and I've also mentioned this on the Basic Nation Discord, if you guys didn't know that. Um, Jolene featuring <laughs> Dolly Parton, um, the one and only. Uh, yeah, those are probably my two favorite bass lines from Pentatonix with Avi Kaplan. Um, I love every one of their songs with him. I love Avi Kaplan, um, but those are probably my two favorite. Uh, with Matt Sa uh, Sully, um, probably Havana, uh, I really, really like that, um, for a bass line, for a bass song, um, also their cover of, uh, The Sound of Silence, um, killed it, great, great cover, that's probably one of my other ones, favorite bass songs, um, yeah, that's probably about it, I think that was all the questions, um, if you guys have any more questions, comment but down below, or you know, hit me up on the BSN Discord. Um, like the last video, my social media links will be down below. Um, the link for the Discord will also be down below. Check that out. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Until then, see you on the next one.